Welcome back to the Isaac Abrams Show, everybody. I'm your host, Isaac Abrams. Today's very special guest, comedian, actor, writer, and philanthropist, Mr. Simon Gibson. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? What if that's how I actually talk? You're like, <laughs> hey, how you doing? It's good. Good to be here. I'm a philanthropist or whatever the fuck that means. That's how you talk in real life. And then when you're on stage, then you play in Simon. Yeah. Then I'm like, hi. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for having me on your show. Thanks for being here, man. Uh, yeah. It's great to be here. I um, I will say this. Okay. Oh, I already saw the video footage. Mm -hmm. Not happy with my outfit choice. Folks, I usually look a lot better. Usually look a lot thinner. I feel like... Uh, I feel like everything's kind of getting, it's out there right now. So yeah. if you see me on other stuff, I don't usually wear uh, a garbage sack. Uh, well, what we could do, as, we could stay in our mafia voices the whole time. Yeah. And then I could just blur you and change your voice and then people won't know who you are. Oh, there like, we go. Yeah. Like a mafia That's what documentary. I want. <laughs> yeah. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want anyone to, to see, to have this yeah. as what they think. Okay, folks. Yeah. So just going I'm Like forward. how many people have you killed? And you're like, I've killed 75 <laughs> yeah. people. <laughs> it was quite the time. Uh, the boss made me whack everybody. <laughs> I was whacking everybody <laughs> off. Come on. Hey, it was New York in the 70s. It was New York. Everyone was getting whacked yeah. off. Off all the time. Yeah. Nothing to do with... <laughs> not, not so much the mafia. <laughs> no. Just really... Everyone's still alive. They, they were just getting whacked off. Just getting whacked off. Yeah. Oof. From Portland, Oregon. Yes. Originally. Yeah. How was that? Growing uh, up there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get into it, okay. Doc. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. So I never really had good examples of how to love. And no. Uh, <laughs> Does your mom love you? Uh, mom, I know you're watching. She watches everything I do. Yeah. No. Well, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, growing up in Portland, it was it was good. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. I think Portland has gone through like three different iterations of what people think it is, you know? Yeah. So when I was growing up, you know, I think like grunge was kind of just getting poppy, even though that was Seattle. But, you know, Portland's like yeah. very close to there. Mm -hmm. So I think people just thought of the Northwest as like grungy, whatever. And then, you know, in the mid mid 2000s, it was Portlandia. Yeah. So that's what everyone thought. Everyone thought, you know, everyone was a wizard and a witch. Mm hmm. Turns out my parents are both of those things. So. Really, that's cool. <laughs> my pa my parents were like quirky for port, like even for Portland back in the nineties. Wow, so, you know it wasn't really like how it was portrayed. You know back in back in the day. So yeah, uh, you know, and now it's a failed state. Right? And now it's literally you know the home team is Antifa. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> so it's like. It's just gone through all these sort of yeah. They're like, oh my god, what a war zone over there. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, the two square blocks where that was happening, and then on the, you know, t two miles away, people are eating you know seventeen dollar eggs. Like, yeah, I think it's, you know, drinking, uh, pour over coffee that yeah. was you know for eighteen bucks that Artisanal. was like yeah shit out of a <laughs> bat or something you know yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I've lived here for like. 14 years now so oh, welcome to la thank you yeah, yeah. I, I finally yeah. made it <laughs> yeah um but you know so like so most of your adult life's been la yeah, yeah. It's, i feel like i know la almost i mean there's still some things in portland that are still there but i mean it's truly changed yeah so dramatically in 10 years that it's like the stuff i remember from when i was a kid i was like yeah oh that's all been torn down you go home and you're like, there's a new Starbucks here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't get new Starbucks, but we will <laughs> but we will, you know, tear down a hundred year old house and then put a condo with uh, you know, artisanal something. Right. Crackers. Yeah. yeah. For dogs. Right. <laughs> uh a lot of your stand up talks about being in customer service. Some yeah. your some I don't want to say a lot. Yeah. I haven't seen the vast catalog of the whole entirety of your I would say I have a 15-minute chunk about customer service. It was really just a way for me to shit on Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, nice. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. No, he's Hot a good guy. Hot take. Uh, uh, Jake but, is a good guy. He's a very yeah, good he's a great guy. But you Come know, on in, Jake. Come on. I didn't, I didn't want to tell you this, but he's... Big fan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually wrote, you know, Taylor Swift's got a 10-minute song. I wrote a 12-minute song of about 
Jake Gyllenhaal. So yeah. I was there first. Have you always been? You're you're very musical on stage, and you sing a lot. Sometimes. I do. Yeah. Is that have, have you always had that in your act? I, f- you know, that's a good. I feel like, um, you know, when I first started, I was basically trying to do. Uh, an imb- an impression of Zach Galifianakis. Okay, you know, because that was like the reason I started. Yeah. I love that weird shit. He's so funny. Um, so it was like him and then Reggie Watts. Okay, you know, who's obviously his whole act is you know musical. Um, but I I think when I first started, I was just kind of you know trying to do these like, and I still do them sometimes, but you know these really bad impressions or characters. Uh, and so that was, I kind of did that for a while. Then I started just like talking about, you know, relatable stuff. I didn't know what I was doing, you know, for yeah. two or three years. And then I did find that I had the best uh, success when I would sing my punchlines. Mm-hmm. And that kind of became this weird sort of crutch uh, where I'd just be like, you know, <laughs> I can't even think of. Uh, Oh, yeah, I'd be, so there's no business like customer service business when you got a fine arts major degree, you know. That's in your um, Laugh Factory clip. Yes. Yeah. So uh, if you Google Simon, there's many, many clips that come up. Definitely check out his YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah, I, when you were like, there's four things that come up. One of them is that you talk about how you come fast. I was like, great. That's what I want out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, when you Google anything, they'll give you just four video options. So those were the four mm. that come up. Did you have to Did you have to Google comedian Simon Gibson, or did you just type in Simon Gibson? I always type in comedian after any comics name just because yeah. it all that'll always get me to the get right you person. right there yeah so do for, you have other competing simon gibsons well that's what i was about to say so for a long time uh there i was always in second place to the other simon gibson what's he, his name uh his, his name's uh <laughs> steve Irwin. <No. laughs> uh but i was always uh you know coming in second to this guy and he's like a canadian parliament member Wow. That has served for, I don't know, decades or something. He's very prominent yeah. over there. So, yeah, for a long time, I couldn't get out of his shadow. Mm-hmm. And then I, you know, <laughs> I like to Google myself from time to time. We Same all do, here. I think. Every Tuesday. Um, <laughs> Google Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I I finally beat that son of a bitch. And yeah. he's... With your fists? I, I mean, on the internet, I, I don't know if he died or what, but he is not coming up as much anymore. Well, so. let's hope he's dead, you know? <laughs> I don't hope anyone's dead, except for him, right. okay? Yeah. This this episode will never air because I, like, threaten a government, like yeah. a, a government it's official. Shadow ban? <laughs> yeah. I hope he, fu- I'm going to fucking kill him. And now if it doesn't get any traction, like if nobody watches it, then I'm going to be like, that fucking Canadian government's blocking my YouTube channel. They blocked it again. Yeah. It's not be the first time. All 73 episodes. That's what <laughs> I just blame it on. It's like, fucking <laughs> God damn it. Um, I have there. I just switched my name. I recently changed my name to Isaac Abrams. Abrams is half of my middle name. And the other Isaac Abrams on the internet, the IsaacAbrams.com, he's like a flute maker or something. What? And he's got like four followers on Instagram. And I'm like, can I get that, Grams? And he never responds. And he probably has. When was his last post? 2012, maybe. <laughs> I think he just signed up and like ditched it. He's like, I'm not selling any flutes on the gram. So. <laughs> yeah. You know what? The Instagram has not upped the flute sales nope. one bit. No, it's hard to sell flutes out in these streets. Man, are they were they nice looking flutes? It, you know, it could be violins. I don't, I just don't. Yeah, it's. I think flutes are hard to make by hand. They're that's metallurgy and crafting stuff. And, oh, yeah. I guess I was thinking of like wooden flutes. Oh, I was thinking, and then this got me thinking about about my dad because, like, yeah, I thought the flutes were like hand hand carved wooden flutes they could but, be but you're just talking like metal metal flutes. yeah he's out there just no that's no good forging stuff yeah <laughs> are your are your parents are musicians did you grow up musical yeah my dad was um uh he was a guitar player singer front man he's 
if I had to compare him to anyone, I would kind of compare him to like James Taylor. Okay. Uh, but you know, I was thinking about this the other day. I don't know. You know, we're, you know, we're we're just similar in age. You know, I think mm-hmm. like I am just getting uh, aggressively nostalgic. Yeah. And just like having all these memories, you know. Uh, oh, I'm getting nostalgic, and I was like, wait, I was still like in my late twenties, and I'm yeah. getting nostalgic for my late twenties. Yeah. Jesus Christ! But I'll have I have these like you know memories of my childhood and stuff. And some of my earliest memories is literally like sitting on the side of the street corner with my dad, and he would basically like start busking. Wow! He would just like open up his guitar plays uh, case, start you know playing his guitar. I would. There's a, a tape that he has of me and him singing covers of the Rolling Stones, and we have it too. Let's roll it. Clip it. I'm just pointing at a box light. (laughs) Do it. Let's go. Do it now. Play it, Steve. (laughs) Come on. Waiting on you, Jack. Steve Irwin. Hit it. Uh, Yeah, so, um, and you know, I would sing along with him, I think, sometimes while he would play, and I'm sure he just cleaned up. I mean, who's not giving money to the father-son duo? You may not know it, but I was a cute-ass kid. Yeah. Macaulay Culkin. Still are. (laughs) cute gray-haired kid <laughs> it's weird man getting uh like i don't know because you know we're both we got we got the silver in there yeah we've got we've lived some lives ladies love the silver they love it and the fellas do too they do too here's the thing with uh having gray hair mm-hmm. uh i originally was kind of like i don't you know i'm a yeah i'm a young kid is it time yeah yeah also i do still kind of have a baby face mm-hmm. so the on camera, like when I'm auditioning for stuff, it looks kind of weird. Yeah. Because you're like, why does this five year old have, gray- <laughs> why does this fat little kid yeah. have a gray hair? But I will say, the gray hair, like I've never been treated with so much respect. Yeah. When I go to places, like people immediately, like I like being called sir. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Me too. And like as someone who worked in customer service for so long, you know, now that I'm, rich as hell yeah okay yeah. uh you know going going in you know and i always treat everyone in customer service like you know i i get it yeah i it's sunday today mm-hmm. i'm not hung over but but you're not not hung over but i'm not you know i'm not a hun- it's sunday yeah you know we're just, i don't know when this comes out about 14 weeks from now 14 weeks from now yeah. and it'll be on a tuesday tuesday or wednesday yeah I mean, it's not Sunday. It's Wednesday or Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Whichever day. This is all filmed live, right. recorded live. We're live streaming right now. It's the stream. This is the stream. Uh, but, you know, I remember what it's like being working a yeah. busy-ass brunch. Like, I worked a brunch shift on Sundays for, like, four or five years straight. Yeah. Hung over four or five years straight. Going in there. Just, I was, like, the barista there, so I wasn't waiting tables. But, you know, I'd get in there. And just uh, Want, immediately yeah. start like, ah, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> yeah, just wanting to be anywhere in the world other than there. Other than there, yeah. yeah. And like I would come in at, I remember this, I would come in at 9.30 and I was like the second, you know, barista bartender on. Yeah. And so like my coworker had already been there for two hours. Wow. And she, and it was me and her worked every Sunday together. And she would just be like losing her mind, you know. There'd just be like stacks of empty, you know, just juice uh, boxes every, you know. And she's yeah. like, ah. <laughs> just losing it. Yeah, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> was was she also hungover? No, no, she was pretty like straight edge. Yeah, I remember she was going to. I mean, not straight edge, but she was like a student, and she was like graduating to be like a physicist or something at UCLA. Wow. Yeah. 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 And then I'm just like, yeah, I was at an open mic until 2 a.m. smoking cigarettes, you know? Yeah. Um, So I get the customer service, but with the (laughs) back to the gray hair, back to the gray hair, back to the future, never been treated so kindly and with so much respect by people in real life. And also, frankly, you know, I've never been hit on so much in my whole life like yeah like women truly love gray hair they do not all you know not everyone but it's not for everybody but 
but I will say, I mean, I, I, I get flirted with a lot and like little eye looks a lot more than when I didn't have it. Yeah. You, you ever catch I mean? anybody just like winking at you and you're like, did that person just wink at me? Yeah, right now. I was into it. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> flirting with dudes. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's Sunday morning. Sunday morning flirting with dudes. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you ever uh, flirt back if you catch yourself, like just for the flattery of it, if if a guy's hitting on you or winking at you, do you, you ever just... Uh, Lean into it a little bit. Oh, dude, I'm all about that shit now. Me too. After the last two years just being locked up, Mm -hmm. I'm like, any attention. Right. (laughs) Any attention is good attention to me Mm -hmm. at this point. And, you know, I'm like, (laughs) I was like, am I bisexual? Could I be bisexual? And I think the answer is no. But I'm not sure. Right. Hit me up. Follow me on Instagram. Ask me if I'm bisexual. Get in the DMs. You could be the first. I'm answering every single DM. I'm accepting every <laughs> message request that comes in there. Do you check your request and messages folder? Well, I do, yeah. You because uh, well, because sometimes, I mean, this is why Instagram is such a prison, and I truly hate social media, mm-hmm. and I wish I didn't have to do it. I do have to do it. Do you think I want to be doing 30 second crowd clips of some bullshit, you know? Right. But that's the stuff that gets the most views now. Mm-hmm. Like if I put on, because my material is not like clickbaity, like, listen, yeah. what does this guy have to say about the, you know, yeah. mine's like, <laughs> I come, <laughs> <laughs> that's what's popping up on the internet. Right. Or like, you know, customer service. My, I guess these are things that, you know, could be relatable, but it's not, I feel like you, to really get those uh, those views, you know, you have to be provocative. Yeah. And it has to, like, catch you right away. There's no right. room to, like, let's see how this develops. Yeah, you, you won't know? believe what Simon Gibson just said. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I probably will believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so I do check those message requests because sometimes it's somebody reaching out asking me to, like, do a show or something. Yeah. So I kind of have to be, but most of the time it is somebody being, like, We'll help you get verified or... Yeah. Would you like like to buy 10,000 views for $100? Yeah. (laughs) No. Or it's always... Like, I'm also psychotic and sick and I'll, like, go through my my stories and see who's watched the stories. Yeah. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's always, like, four or five for me that's just, like, (laughs) watch my first sex here. Right. Check out my little baby here. Yeah. (laughs) I said baby instead of pussy. (laughs) I don't know why. I almost said baby pussy. Yeah, yeah. No, no good. This will never air now, by the way. Oh, we are canceled. Threatened a Canadian prime minister or whatever. Shit on Instagram. Shit on Instagram. Yeah, we just won't clip that part. Yeah, don't clip. No, No, we won't clip that. Um, Yeah, I get the same thing. I I sickly, uh, when I, I'm sickly, when I scroll through the names to see who it is, I'm just looking for blue checks. Oh. I want to see how many famous people saw my story. Saw that story. Yeah. You know how hard it is to get verified on Instagram? It's like, it used to be easy before I had the credentials to get verified. And now I have the credentials and I, and they, I've been rejected like four times. Do you have, is your PR applying on your behalf? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What the fuck? And then I applied on my, yeah. They haven't seen Cannonball? That's what I'm saying. You're on national Nobody television. Saw it, Nobody saw Cannonball. Oh, really? <laughs> it looked like a lot of fun to work on. It was the most fun thing I've ever... I mean, all I did was interview people after they got, you know, moderately to severely injured. Oh, I thought you were going to say psoriasis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Moderate to... Yeah, this becomes uh, an ad for moderate to severe psoriasis. <laughs> That's Cannonball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was um, on USA, right? Yeah, on USA. And then they it also aired on NBC because NBC, it, this was like during, you know, the summer of 2020. Right. So NBC owns USA and like it's part of like Universal Family. Yeah. So they were like, hey, we have nothing to air. Yeah. We're taking this show too. Rerun, rerun. Just yeah. Play it all the time. Um, what lake did you guys shoot that at? God, what was it? It was at uh, in Silmar. So oh, it was like deep, deep valley. Deep you know, valley. yeah. I thought it was going to be a little further north, like Castaic or no, I one of the ranches like Disney or something. 
It was the greatest commute of all time. Yeah. Uh, for all the folks, you know, we live in uh, hell, L.A. LA. Um, so, like, in the morning for me, you know, it's it's like a good 20 miles from where I lived. Yeah. But I was always, I was going north in the morning. Against traffic. So, like, I didn't really hit any traffic. On the way home, you know, there was traffic, but I didn't really care as much because I didn't have to get there. Like, my call time was like 6.30 a.m. every wow. day. Yeah. Because we only filmed it during the daytime. Right. And this was also October to November. So, you know, the, the sun started going down yeah. at like 5. So we had to like f just film that whole time. So you shot that 2019 into 2020 and then Pandy hits and then they air? 2019. Yeah. End of 2019. Yeah. We filmed all 10 episodes in a month. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let me just say, the first two months of 2020, best best start to a year for me <laughs> of all time. I was like, I was like, holy shit, I yeah. finally did it, you know? I mean, you were just coming off of Fresh Faces at JFL in 2018, right? So it was like... 2018. Bam. Yeah. And then TV show the next year. And it's like, man, we're really crushing. Yeah. I will say though that that uh, the year after JFL was probably the hardest of my whole life. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, so for those who don't know, you know, like just for laughs is essentially like what a lot of people would consider, you know, like a benchmark achievement yeah. Yeah. in a comedy career, specifically the new faces. Yeah. So it's like they invite ten. I think 10 or 20 uh, comedians from all across the country yep. to be a part of the new faces. You know, it's like all the industry, all the whatever, everyone's there yeah. to see you. If you really blow them away, you know, you never know. And even if you don't, some of the like 18th, 19th, 20th folks, least funny, they're all very funny because there's it's a national search, right? They're, this guy's pulling from the whole country. I say all yeah. that to say like, even the, the least funny of that very funny group still gets agents, managers, deals, per, you know, all that shit. Right? Yeah, I mean, you'll you'll get a lot of industry. You know, if if you went up there with no representation, you know, I mean, hopefully you do. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't. At least for me, like none of it happened right away. Okay. You know, it still took like everyone's different, but I had to. I had to sit back and watch people that were on my same year, you know, mm -hmm. get things right away. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, I felt like I had done, you know, at, at that moment, now I can't even watch that set because oh, I'm really? just like, oh, I'm such a, I'm like, I do some of the same things, but I'm so much different now. Yeah. You know, it was like four, almost four, over four years ago now. Yeah. And a whole pandemic. <laughs> and a whole pandemic. Yeah. I changed. Yeah, <laughs> you, you're different. I'm different now. <laughs> uh, but I think, <laughs> <sighs> but coming out of it, you know, and um, you know, because it was a docu series, mm -hmm. but they paid us for it, you yeah. know. So it was like the most money. I, you know, I'm working in restaurants and shit, and then I, all of a sudden, I'm I'm making all this money during the filming. Yeah, and so I like quit my job. But by the time the actual show came out. Because it was like a docu series based on that festival. Yeah, was that, that the only year in. that they did the docu series? It's the only year that they did it. That was the year with Rosebud. Rosebud, yeah, yeah, and uh, and J C Carias, uh, and um, I Robert, loved it. Robert I watched, Dean. I watched that whole thing. I fucking yeah, that check shit it up. out. Am yeah. <laughs> Inside jokes, Amazon Prime. I mean, mm. it is. You know, it was a very sincere like look into not just that festival, but I guess like what it also, you know, means to be like a struggling comedian. Yeah. Um, and you know, I had to I had to watch people like her and like you know some other people on that festival kind of get really big things right away. Mm -hmm. And and as someone who felt like at the time I had done. That was like the best set I'd ever had in my whole life. You know, it was like, I was like, whoa, what a just magical moment. And then it didn't really lead to anything immediately. Yeah. And then by the time the show came out, I had spent all the money. Right. So I had to like go back to, 
you know, work at these restaurants. And then I was like getting recognized oh. working at the restaurant from the show that had just come out. And they're like, wait, yeah. aren't you like a star now? And yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm and doing I'm- this. I'm paying them to be here, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's how much I love the game. But, you know, so it was very, you know, it was a very hard time. Uh, 2019 was like, I would say it tested my resolve yeah. and my mental fortitude more than any other year except for these next years. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then at the very, you know, September... 2019 i basically booked cannonball Mm -hmm. um so like it it just it i i feel like for most people uh if anything does happen from jfl and frankly a lot of people the majority it doesn't really move the needle at all yeah it's this thing that as comedians Mm -hmm. you know we all think is this like super important thing yeah and then you do it and there's this like kind of you know dopamine like i know a lot of people who come back and they had an incredible time they you know essentially got everything they wanted out of it and then they're super depressed yeah because it's just this emotional <clears throat> letdown no matter how it goes you know you right. come back and yeah you have a couple of you have a couple of general meetings with you know people who work in casting at yeah. fox or whatever just a couple meet and greets get to know you as- yeah. See if we have something right for you. Because yeah. that's what a lot of people don't understand at home is like, or even a lot of comics going into it, like they got to find something that's right for you. It's not like, oh, yeah. JFL's today. Oh, by the way, we're casting for Mission Impossible tomorrow. Yeah. Did you ever hear those stories? Like there's stories about like how how ridiculous the entertainment industry used to be back in the day where it's like, you. this was the recipe. It was like, you know, either you go on Carson. Mm-hmm. You do well. You still have to do well. Yeah, that's the hard part. Like, they don't tell you. There's plenty of comics who probably went on Carson and did mediocre or straight up, like, bombed, yeah. you know? But, like, yeah, back in the day, you do your five minutes on Carson. You're immediately famous, you mm-hmm. know? Uh, and back in the day, like, JFL, the recipe was, like, you go up there, you do five minutes about your weird family, and then you get a development deal for a sitcom. Yeah. And even if that sitcom never airs, like there was some some guy, I just heard these ridiculous stories of like, you know, comedians would get like hundreds of thousands of dollars and the, and the sick, it would never air. It wouldn't yeah. even be a pilot. It would just like, so like the amount of money that they used to throw out. Oh, insane. And now that's not the case. Yeah. But. I think Bert Kreischer got like 400 grand to never make a show. <laughs> it's just like, it's like it's about his life. Like. Yeah, the, the movie business just wants to know, like, if something else that you do pops off. This was before shit could go viral on social media, but like, if they if if something does hammer down, then they also got you, and then they can make money off of you. Yeah, and it's it was worth the gamble because if they did a hundred grand for a hundred people, mm-hmm. and one of them gets if one of them Seinfeld, yeah, that's billions of dollars. Yeah, there would never be another Seinfeld. Man, you could have like. There's people, yeah, who had like three or four lines in a Seinfeld episode that are probably still paying their rent. Oh, of course. Off of that money. I don't, maybe not now cuz I don't know how residuals work when like a streaming service just buys it outright. Yeah, I don't know either. But but I I mean, growing up my childhood into my young adult life was like two hours of Seinfeld reruns on TBS oh, every yeah. single night, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, if that were the case, you know, you're just like, it almost feels we like I would love that. But if I, if I just, you know, was had, was a guest star in an right. episode and I'm still making like thousands of dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, or hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Like the cast of Friends still makes 20 million a year each. Oh yeah. Off of the streaming residuals. I mean, that'll never happen again. No, but if like um, the, the barista guy in Friends, right? He's probably gotta be doing all right. Oh, that Gunther. Gunther, right? Man. what ha- Whatever happened to Gunther? I mean, he's hopefully alive. Yeah, spending that sweet, sweet Friends money. <laughs> 
God, I want some friends money. Yes. Um, well, we have it for you right here, actually. Hey! <laughs> just pull a briefcase. What took you so long? <laughs> you know that's why I came. I just turned into Mr. Beast, and I just start giving every guest $100,000. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That was what's so funny about, like, that... Uh, being on on cannonball was like yeah the money was it was i've never made that much money but i was also like oh yeah this is like middle middle class income yeah and i was like oh, i'm so rich yeah. what am i doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> did you learn the the lesson from being on the jfl show and you were like I'm not going to go and spend all this cannonball money right away. Or were you just like thinking about the future? Or were you just like, no, I bought a new Tesla. No, I didn't. So, yeah. I mean, fortunately, I did save it because then the pandemic happened. Yeah. And so there was nothing. So, yeah, I definitely learned my lesson from the first time. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that was like three years ago now. Yeah. Which... It's so crazy. I mean, I don't know. Like, has every single guest just been like, it's so crazy that the pandemic happened. <laughs> no, I mean, I you know, I'd say one out of three or four have a Pandy story. But like, yeah, I did a daily pop culture podcast all through Pandy. Oh, 400 daily? episodes. Yeah. Whoa. 15 minutes a day, five days a week. We would we would shoot it all at one time. Yeah. A week. But <clears throat> oh, man, I have talked about the pandemic on podcast yeah Pro may, i might have a world record a world record for yeah. talking about it dude yeah. the first four months for me of the pandemic <laughs> this is a sitcom for you right yeah. here okay so we take a kid whose parents are wizards and witches from nice. portland yeah and we put him with his girlfriend and her republican parents <laughs> in rancho cucamonga during the summer of 2020 yep and the protests and whatnot and you got living in hell Li um well which is also living in ranchos living in <laughs> dude i had a great time in well so okay yeah when the when everything first started mm -hmm. you know uh my girlfriend at the time we both had multiple roommates so it was like and la was going to shit so I was like, all right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna stay with your parents mm -hmm. who have a you know really nice house in Rancho, uh, while L.A. tears itself to the ground. Yeah, we'll be safe out here in yeah. the suburbs. So it was only supposed to be, we were only supposed to be out there for a couple of weeks, like just till the whole thing blew over. You know yeah. how it was. And our mom to? and dad home. They're home. They work from home or yeah. Wow. So they everyone was still working. Like her her dad was like. Um, not a foreman of a construction site, but he was like the the planner. Yeah. So he had to be on site. Mm -hmm. But yeah, her and her mom both worked remote the whole time. I'm just smoking weed in the backyard. Nice. In playing your, with the dogs. In your underpants, just yeah. walking around the house. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so we, yeah, basically we ended up living there, sleeping in her childhood bedroom, uh, having the best sex of our lives. No. <laughs> Just uh, with one paper thin wall away from her mom and dad. Yeah. Who are also having the best sex oh of my their God. lives. Yeah. They were. They were getting down. Get it. Um, and we stayed there for almost five months. Wow. I lived out there. Yeah. And uh, so you had you both had it to where you could just jump from the places you were living but with your roommates. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Well, I mean, that was the thing is like if we go back t back to our respective places we won't really be able to see each other yeah because remember everyone's like if you break quarantine you're the worst piece of shit yeah that's ever lived 20 people will die if you go to the supermarket today yeah it was literally like those commercials were kind of like it was like when i was a kid and and they were really taught like aids you know mm -hmm. like if you slept with this person they slept and then it just does that sort of like the tree if yeah. i sleep with one person i slept with four thousand people sign me up <laughs> yeah. yeah damn a couple of notches on the i got laid four thousand times last night <laughs> um so yeah so that's why i mean we just like stayed out there the whole time yeah it was super serious at first yeah yeah and you know i i never really spent that much time around people who were like openly republican mm -hmm. and i gotta be honest they were great. Yeah. <laughs> they had nice, they had the nicest shit. Yeah, and lots of guns. They had two, here's how you know people are got money. Mm -hmm. Second fridge, 
just for drinks. Oh, just yeah. for treats. Right in the garage. Yeah. Yep. And and a freezer maybe. Oh yeah. Oh, With yeah. just all the, the yeah. meats. It's like an Arby's in there. Yes. Yeah. Her mom would every week. She was like one of the people who was like the pro like why are we out of all this stuff at the grocery store because she would just come with like hundreds of dollars yep. like i got all these steaks that we can freeze i'm <laughs> like cool i bought a uh, shed for the backyard to store all this toilet paper yeah but they were very nice took me in you know like yeah. treated me great and like it actually turned out that i was the one who was kind of the piece of shit like <laughs> i uh <laughs> i've told this story quite a few times but i'm gonna tell it one more time so exclusive and then it's retired Oh, sweet. Uh, but one of the things I, I would do, because I didn't really have any purpose, you know, I was like trying to find a, like we were recording our podcasts like three or four days a week mm -hmm. um, just to have something to do, you know? Yeah. And uh, so one of the things that I really got into was making dinner for everyone. Oh, like cool. Like I'd make the, you know, I'd basically just, you know, drink wine and smoke and then like make like a roasted chicken you know yeah uh pulling your weight really get into it yeah yeah and so one night you know i made this like uh this like really nice dinner this like pork loin pot with pasta you know mm -hmm. uh the whole the whole thing and um and it was a great night her her dad liked to like to polish off wine and they had good wine too you sure. know republican wine republican wine coming this fall yeah <laughs> um so you know we we polished off a couple bottles of wine and uh her parents go to bed uh we're about to watch a movie and i'm like you know what make this better i'm gonna go outside roast this bone you know mm -hmm. and so i go outside take take a huge hit and then like i'm in their backyard you know they lived in this like you know neighborhood of you know, kind of cookie cutter, yeah, McMansion y type things, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I, I started to, you know, I was about, I was like choking, about to cough really hard, but I didn't want her neighbors just to hear, you know, some guy dying of COVID in the backyard. Oh, right. Cause that's what I was thinking. I was yeah. like, if you, you know, he cough, you know, burn him alive or something. Yeah, they'll come get you. <laughs> yeah, they just put you in like a van shows up. <laughs> yeah, plastic suits. Tarp. Come with us. <laughs> yeah. So I was like trying to hold it in, you know. And I'm just full of wine and pasta. And then, like, trying to hold in my coughs, I end up puking. Oh, no. Just, like, and not, like, you know, where you chug too much beer and you're, like, bleh. It was, like, puking. You know, it was not cute. Was it red wine? It was red wine. So it looks like you're throwing up blood? Red wine, white uh, sauce, pasta. Yeah. You know. What a combo. Yeah. And then I'm just, like, oh, shit. I got to do something about that. And then what I did about that was I completely forgot about that <laughs> and then went and fell asleep, woke up the next morning and, uh, and her family's like, all, like her, all of them are like standing in the kitchen. They're like, and it's a very dark, somber Ooh. vibe out there. Yeah. And I walk out and I'm like, good morning. You know, I'm like kind of hung over too. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> And uh, they're like, good morning. And then uh, my girlfriend was like, hey, babe, you didn't get sick last night, did you? And I was like, what? No. Who, me? Yeah, I like don't even remember <laughs> what she's talking about. I'm yeah. just like, I don't have COVID. <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> and uh, and then she's, I was like, yeah, I didn't. No, I'm not sick. And she's like, oh, yeah, okay. I thought so because, uh, because something puked in the backyard last night and i was like something <laughs> and then i immediately remembered uh and i was like oh no i i lied i just immediately lied i was oh, like no. no and then You're it was a vomit one of, denier yeah vomit denier. <laughs> uh and then i knew like her you know these people were so polite mm -hmm. the whole time that was like that's the Republican way. They're falsely polite sometimes, yeah. you know. Uh, God, I loved it. Did you clean it up? So her mom was like, knew that I was, like I looked in her eyes and she knew I was lying. Yeah. And she's like, okay. <laughs> I guess, I guess the dog did have some of the broccolini. 
<laughs> it was like a full shard of broccoli. Yeah. And that's when I knew, you know, and then I waited like 10 minutes and then I like gathered the whole family and I was like, yeah, I did it. And they were like, were they shocked? They're like gasping. <gasps> yeah. They were like, no shit. <laughs> we were just going to li- let you live with this lie and never bring it up again. So, yeah. um, and then also I did say, uh, that I was drunk and horny, uh, in front of them on her mom's birthday. So oh. I was not the best house guest. Yeah. Uh, but this does sound like the pilot for your new sick. This is the whole, I just pitched the whole show. We'll tighten it up. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think we're getting there. Yeah. I could see it. Yeah. Who's playing the dad? Um, I'm thinking, I mean, I always go John C. Riley. Oh, know? okay. Yeah. I think he'd be a good, all right. But I'm like, who's someone maybe, uh, well, maybe he's a little too old now, he, but Jeff Bridges, Jeff Bridges. Okay. I was thinking the guy from the righteous gemstones, uh, John Goodman, John Goodman, John Goodman would be yeah. <laughs> good. He would be good, man. I've never watched The Righteous Gemstones. Oh, treat it? yourself. If you ever did any religious stuff, which maybe you didn't growing up in Portland. I didn't. Yeah. Did it, you? Oh, super religious. Okay. Super duper growing up religious. Church twice. Catholic, on, Christian. Regular Christian. Re- regular Reg- old. Regular, just one book. Well, I guess that's not, I guess Catholic would be regular old Christian. Sometimes. Right? The OG. Yeah. For us, we call Catholics Catholics, and then Catholics called themselves Christians and Catholics. It was really confusing growing up. Yeah. Yeah, I never went to church. Yeah, uh, and I wanted to really growing up. Oh, yeah. I, I well, because my dad was a else. long-haired guitar playing hippie, you know, and my yeah. mom like worked. In, my mom was like a theater writer and like caught, you know. So I grew up just with fringe people, you know. Yeah. And, and again, like I said, you know, it was weird even for Portland. So I wanted to be, you know, like normal. Mm-hmm. And normal was like, yeah, all my friends, they go to church on Sunday. And I really wanted to be a part of that. Well, well it's never too late. I, <laughs> I'm i going. Whatever yeah. Chris Pratt, whatever that crazy we're going, shit is. We're going right now. Yeah. Right after this. It is Sunday. I won't go to church unless it somehow helps my career. Oh, then you want to go to the one on La Brea and... Uh, yeah, the Chris Pratt one. Is that where he goes? Yeah, what, it's where him and like... Uh, him and... Uh, it's one weird word, like... Uh, a yeah, I thought him and that's, uh, you know, Arnold's daughter. They all... I mean, every, every influencer that goes to church goes to that one. Goes to that one. La Brea and Hollywood, I think. Yeah. It's fancy. Yeah, what's it called, though? It's like... It starts with an A, I think. <laughs> a, a Trisha? I don't know. A tri- yeah. It's something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, I'm going. Okay. Yeah. That is probably a church that like doesn't let everyone in though. Oh no, they have to see like actually you can't get in, you're not verified. Yeah, you gotta be verified. <laughs> I show them my, my blue check mark on Twitter and they're like, like doesn't no, count. We don't tweet here. Because of Cannonball, I got verified on TikTok when I had like two hundred followers. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, and I never posted, and then for, for like a year. When I would post on TikTok, every single comment was just like, why are you verified? How did you get verified? Why am I not verified? You know? Hilarious. Yeah, it was pretty great. I I love TikTok. I can't get a hold of it. I can't. I'll post the same exact content that I'm, the reels that I'm posting on my Instagram. Yeah. I'll post them on TikTok. Nothing. I mean, flatline. I'm talking like 200 views. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. People have been now suggesting to absolutely delete the whole account and start over and only follow people that make the content that you make. And uh, then it'll put it in the algorithm with those other people. I see. Yeah. So f- I got it. Okay. Yeah, it's weird. TikTok's so funny, man. Like, like I'll literally... I have to take it off of my phone though. Mm-hmm. So I don't post on there as much as, you know, to really grow. Like, uh, you know, it's okay. Like the numbers on there, it's f- f- whatever. Yeah. But if I were really posting every day, then I know it would go up, but I can't do that because TikTok, like no other app will literally suck an hour from me. Oh yeah. And I won't even be, I'll be like the disassociation aspect of it is so real mm-hmm. and i'll just be like you know because you can just do this you know oh, and yep. it's just immediately something new you're seeing some new video and it's yeah. always entertaining um yeah i've tried 
I don't. That's the other thing is I don't watch videos on TikTok because I already get sucked into Instagram. Like I'll tell myself mm-hmm. I'm going to work a post that I just posted. It's like mm-hmm. oh, I got to send it to ten people. I got to comment. I got to like it myself. I got to do all this other shit, and then I'll find myself like just watching all. I mean, story after story after story. Yeah, I just need to follow a lot less people. You can't get to the end of it. That's the whole problem. Yeah, it's not like that's over for today. I know. There's. Do you know in China they shut it down at like six or seven o'clock? Or like eight o'clock, it's just like no more TikTok for today. Really? Yeah. You know, sometimes these like you know kind of overbearing regimes, they know what's best. They're on to something. <laughs> I'm already like getting on China's good side. Yeah. I'm like I'm gonna get ahead of this. Yeah. Huh? Right. Okay. If I'll you, do whatever you say. If you come take us over, we're on your team. Team China. I don't need much. Just a nice one bedroom apartment. Yeah, in China. In yeah. Do you speak? Is it Mandarin? Mandarin. I do not. We but should, I could learn. And we, I'll probably have to. We're gonna have to start. <laughs> in fact, by the time this comes out, you might be fluent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've recorded so many episodes ahead of time. Like <laughs> I'm like, we don't know what's gonna happen in 14 weeks. What are yeah. you talking about? So let's try and predict the future. Ah. Uh, in 14 weeks from now? Yeah, let's just call it three months, right? So this yeah, is three currently... three months from now, what is that? This That's is August, the end of this year. September, October, this is like November. Let's say... Yeah. Let's say... Let's call it Thanksgiving. Yeah. This is the special Thanksgiving holiday edition. Yeah. By Thanksgiving. Uh, I mean, I don't... You know, what's going on with me personally? I booked the biggest role in my life. Yeah. Okay? Which and, in turn uh, blew this show up. And now I have a mansion. Exactly. Yeah. I'm still living in the same place, but uh, I'm happy about it. Okay. Maybe I have my own parking spot now. Ooh. That would be pretty cool. Upgrades. Upgrade. Uh, I've, you know, my I, I have a dishwasher now. What's his name? Yeah, I was about to say, I don't, <laughs> I didn't buy it. I actually bought a person to person wash the that dishes. Wa- that's yeah. right. Um, but it has to be a man. Only... A man. Yeah. A straight man. A super cis straight man. Right. He's got to wash my dishes. And that's all he does. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, I'm 14 weeks from now, biggest. I blew up. We all blew. You got a mansion. Yeah. I got the same place. I figured out comedy and I'm doing spots around LA. You're doing spots all over town. I'm passed at the store. I'm also passed at the store. We got passed together. Together. I turned it down. Right at first. And then I changed my mind. And then the money was so good. They said the money was good. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and the world is uh, doing better than ever. Right. And because aliens have revealed themselves. And they're like, you guys really fucked up. Right. We have to fix this now. Yeah. We thought you would be able to do it on your own. You Turns can't. out you can't. No. Uh, you guys so suck at this. You guys are not great. This experiment, we're starting over. Yeah. I think that they, uh, I think aliens are the ones that gave us smartphones. Because we were just going from like regular phones and pagers and like real shitty flip phones mm-hmm. to all of a sudden like. We're yeah. all, you know, this magical device that we're... Now we look at it while we're driving our cars. Dude, they didn't even think that 300 years into the future in, like, Star Trek, they didn't even think we would have a computer that was that small With a that screen. also played music and you could talk into. I mean, they're yeah. like, you know, the thing, like... That was as far as they could. It's a long range <laughs> walkie, talkie. walkie talkie. That's or 300 the, years from now. The button. Yeah. That also translated every language ever. That was pretty cool. We're just getting around to that. And I think we're doing that with. Uh, yeah. I mean, I use the translator app all the time. Yeah. Because I do think that the love of my life probably doesn't speak English. It's clearly Mandarin. It's Mandarin. Yeah. I wish it uh, were Spanish. Oh, but it's going to be man. It is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you have a proclivity for the Spaniards? Uh, I, you know, pretty much anyone who likes me, I'm into it. All right. Uh, as long as you're Spanish, <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll take them all. Okay, I am. Yeah. I'm out on the market, and just if I could. Well, not anymore. Oh, because 14 weeks I from mean, now. You've met the love of your life. I've already met the love. I'm sorry. He's a Spanish guy Honey. From, from China. Yeah. <laughs> he speaks Mandarin. He loves the Sp- 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 only Sp- people from Spain, though. Like when I say, yeah. 
But he's he's a expat from Spain living in Mandar Mandalorian. Yeah, Mandar- I'm the Mandalorian. <laughs> That's another fourteen weeks from now. We find out that you've been cast in the final season of the Mandalorian. Yeah, and the, like, he takes the helmet off, and it's your and face. it's me. Even though he's already <laughs> taken his helmet off on that show, it doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Okay, this is fourteen weeks from now, people. Yeah, come on. <laughs> The whole world's different. <laughs> the whole world is different. Now. Disney Plus just has your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, HBO Max doesn't even exist anymore. No, Disney Plus bought it. Yeah, di- <laughs> we just <laughs> welcome. <laughs> We're coming to you live from the Disney Plus studios. That's right in Mandarin. And next month we're going to rename it the Simon Gibson app. Thank you. It's about time. <laughs> yeah, and we 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 retire Mickey Mouse and we put your face on all the parks. Yeah. I love it. Happiest place on earth. That's right. Right here, baby. Yeah, it is now. It is now. Now that we're all Gibsoned out. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Are you from the Gibson Guitar Fortune? Got it. Yes. Yeah. The Guitar Fortune and yeah. they, you know, they make fridges too. Right. They, we make apply we make home appliances and the best guitars. And uh being related to Mel, what's that like? <laughs> Well, it's a lot of me getting kicked out of bars saying, do you have any idea who my father is? <laughs> uh, so it's great. Yeah. I actually used to, <laughs> when I was a little young punk, mm-hmm. and I would get cut off at bars as it was the right call. Yeah. Looking back on it, it was definitely the right call. Mm-hmm. I used to have this uh, inside joke with myself where I would say to the bartender, when they're like, no, nah, I can't serve you anymore. I would say, do you have any idea who my father is? Because <laughs> I don't. I'm yeah. looking for him. Come on. And it was, That's why I'm in here drinking. Yeah, I'm looking. Because <laughs> I don't. Am I right, folks? Come uh, on. And then they're like, that was funny. You get another. They're drink. like, that was funny. But you're definitely still cut off. Oh, that's and the I, worst when you're just thirsty and you want another drink. Yeah. And I did, didn't need it. Yeah. But uh, no, nah, I haven't been. You got to be pretty hammered to get cut off. Have you been cut off at a... I try not to get to that point in my local bar. I live right next to a bar and go there every day. Okay. And I try... But what to... about... I mean, we're not now, obviously. We know how to handle it now. Yeah, we can like... drive pretty good now. <laughs> yeah. I'm driving for lift, okay? Yeah. I'm Long lit... night. They call it lit lift. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've definitely been like, hey, man, time to go. Yeah. A couple times. But you don't really remember those times because you're blackout drunk. Yeah. I mean, I... There's like some memories all blur together, and then yeah. you'll have like some weird, vivid memory of when you were like 20, mm-hmm. and it's still like you still picture it. And I do remember there was one time when I was like literally just turned 21, and uh, getting getting kicked out, you know, mm-hmm. and then saying that, "Do you have any idea who my father <laughs> is?" And I really said that. Mm -hmm. Did not get a laugh. Mm. Other than from me. And and I still think about that 40 Mm. years later. I feel like the flashbacks... I'm 68. You look great for 91. Thank you. Um, I feel like the flashbacks that I get now that I get older, it's just like embarrassing memory after it. Like only the embarrassing things flashback. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. What are some... uh, (laughs) Oh, I mean... I've told this on another podcast, but I, I pooped myself in a river on a youth retreat. And Whoa. I, yeah. And I, but I was at the back, and the current took the object. Did people say? Oh, my God. It weaved its way through the group, and people were like, oh, my God, there's poop in the river. And, like, the leader of the group, like, he was a big man, and he kind of, like, beached himself up on a rock and started throwing up. It was very, very embarrassing. <laughs> Jesus Christ! How old were you? <laughs> Literally, uh, seventeen, probably. Seventeen. Yeah. I mean, you're never too old to like shit yourself. I had we, we the lake or river that we were going to was an hour away from where we started, and I had to poop before we left. Uh, that is the worst. I, I think those kind of tra- traumatic moments. Those, yeah, you you remember those. Not not that I really wanted to talk about this, but I do remember. Uh, walking to uh, video. <laughs> Remember video stores? What's a video store? <laughs> Let me tell you. It's a giant cube that you put in a thing. <laughs> um, but I would, you know, during the summer, one of the big things I would do is like, 
you know, it's probably like a mile away, but walk to Hollywood video. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't have a blockbuster near me. It was Hollywood video. Mm -hmm. And I'd go there, rent some movies, come back. On the way back, because it was like a 20, 25 minute walk. 25 minute mile. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was pretty healthy back I mean, then. Yeah. setting records. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, and I like... It it came like just a monsoon, mm. and I'm I'm halfway home, and I just I'm like oh my god oh my god, and there was because I had to cut through this middle uh, middle school oh, no. to get, to get home. Well, this was summer, so it was like right. but there I you know so it was just this long field, mm -hmm. uh, and at the end of it there was an actual like porta potty. That was set up. Well, yeah, like an and, oasis in the desert. Yeah, and so I'm just like, oh my god, there it is, and I'm trying to get there, and I do not make it. It's like I see it, it's coming up, and it just happens, and then I had to walk the rest of the way oh, home. Yeah, in the hot summer sun, oh, and god. I I also remember like, you know, every time you know you leave your house as like a teenager mm -hmm. you think something exciting could happen you're like maybe i'll meet some girls or something yeah. and it never happens of mm -mm. course except for this time oh no i'm walking back and i'm just like oh my god i got shit in my pants and i do remember seeing two girls and one guy like of the same age as me and we walk by each other and i don't know if I mean, they don't say any again. This vivid memory, but like they yeah. don't say anything. And uh, but I just remember like seeing a look where they probably couldn't smell it, but I was like, they knew, yeah, that I had made a poopy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. We think everybody's a mind reader when we're in middle school. Yeah, it's like everybody knows what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's crazy. And they do. And they do. <laughs> they do. Uh, I have some rapid fire end of the episode questions Let's that do I ask it. everyone. Let's do it. Uh, but I want to ask one other thing first. Yeah. Biggest influences, comedy influences. We already talked about that at the top. It was uh, Zach Galifianakis and Reggie Watts. Do you have anybody else? Yeah. I mean, my biggest comedy influences, you know, I didn't watch stand up growing up, you know, like comedy is kind of a newer thing that I liked. Like, I didn't really. So growing up, I would say my biggest influences for sure are like Chris Farley, Jim Carrey, um, Robin Williams. But, yeah. but Robin Williams even was like, you know, he was already kind of doing serious movies by the time yeah. I was, you Hook. know. Yeah. yeah, Hook was like, I, I was like, you know, fucking five when that came out, mm -hmm. you know, and he was already like. He wasn't Robin Williams, you know, from Mork and Mindy, you right. know, that type of late, Man. you know, set or eighties Robin Williams. You yeah, know? Um, he was no no Good Morning Vietnam anymore. He was yeah. He was, so it was definitely that SNL cast of mm -hmm. you know the the nineties. You know, Adam yeah. Sandler, David Spade. Yeah, you know all those, but mainly Chris Farley. <laughs> like so that that's where you get all your super physical animated stuff from. Absolutely. I mean, and, you know, Jim Carrey is like the master of physical comedy. and mm -hmm. um, But I would say he's definitely more like elastic, you know. I'm yeah. more like, brah, brah. And that's right. very much Farley. Bull in a china shop. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, but, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I but not I really stand-ups, you know, growing up. Until, you know, that the early 2000s mm -hmm. when alternative you know, weirdo comedy really kind of like started to ascend. Yeah. Did you move here for comedy or for acting? For acting. Yeah. 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 And to do acting voiceovers and, you know, just trying to do that. And then I, and then, yeah, I just kind of fell into stand up. Mm -hmm. And then that has sort of led to all the other things that I moved here to do. Yeah. You I know? always say comics get the keys to the castle first. They always get the writer's jobs and, I think if you can do if become a successful stand up, then I think you can act because you're already acting when you're on stage. Yeah. But not all actors can do stand up. Yeah. And I will say, not all stand ups can act. Not all stand ups it is can stand up. It's fucking painful sometimes oh, to yeah. watch. Yeah. That's <laughs> also true. Um, okay. Rapid fire yeah. questions. Let's go. What's the weirdest thing you saw or did as a kid? 
the weirdest thing I saw or did. Did you find a dead body or as a kid? Did you oh, see some man. weird shit in the woods. Whoa, that's a good question. I'm like the weirdest shit I ever saw as a kid. <laughs> I do have this old memory where, like, because uh, I would go with my my mom to. Uh, she worked at this like costume uh, warehouse for theaters, mm-hmm. and I remember. Um, I remember there was just this horrible smell in there. Mm, just old clothes. I thought it was old clothes, but then it was just like, it was just the like the worst smell, and then it turned out that uh, that like a rat had died behind a in the pipe or something. Oh yeah. And then I saw them actually like take out the wall and I saw this like decomposing rat. And I guess that's not really weird, but it definitely traumatized me. It so. left, it left an impression. It left an sure. impression. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, it's no stand by me, but, you know. but yeah, I'm like, that's no good. Yeah. You didn't kill a like hell's angel biker with your three other friends or, yeah, when I was seven, I did <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, pretty twice. Great, pretty, pretty great moment. Uh, have you ever seen a UFO or a ghost or any paranormal activity? When I, uh, yeah, when I was like four, um, I don't remember this, but uh, my my mom tells me that I had this like imaginary friend, really named like Dop or something. But I think that was also because I couldn't, you know, I was just like stop. Yeah, Dop. Uh, but yeah, it was a leprechaun, <laughs> and apparently it like sometimes uh, he would like make me laugh, and then other times uh, he would really scare me. But I have no memory of that. This is yeah. just what they said. But one time I did think I saw a UFO when I was twelve, mm. like floating through <laughs> Portland. Like it was just, and then it turned out just to be a blimp. Oh. So that was very disappointing. I'm waiting for somebody to be like, I've been abducted. Yeah. I saw Neuralink one time. I was at a comics house working on their podcast studio. He was out in the backyard. He's like, everybody get out here. Not not Neuralink, Starlink. The Whatever the thing is in space that Elon put there for everybody to have internet in Africa or whatever. Oh, yeah. And it's just like evenly spaced dots just flying across. And we're well, like, this is it. They're coming. Yeah. They're, we're, we're all going to die. They're already here, man. There among we us. can't even see it. I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Have you ever experienced a natural disaster? Uh, no. Ex- well, oh, yeah. I mean, earthquakes here, whatever. Yeah. Big whoop. That's something that happens. Uh, when I was in Oklahoma, like seven or eight years ago, uh, we had to, I was staying at a friend's, friend's house, uh, and it was like, spring which is tornado season yeah and um the i never seen a sky that just looked like uh it was like green mm-hmm. and um and i was talking to this guy and i was just like man is there a tornado and he's like he's like yeah you see the you see that cloud that's kind of like looks like a mushroom and I was like, yeah, I see it. And he's like, yeah, you just got to, you know, if those start to funnel, then that's a problem. And I look in the sky and there's like a hundred of those kinds of clouds. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. And he's like, yeah, it ain't a problem. And he's like, he's like, unless it looks like that. And that's a problem. And he says that and he points and it's like directly over us. And I see the funnel start to form. Wow. And then we all, there was like eight of us because we were on this like big comedy road trip. Uh, that was so poorly planned it was incredible Mm -hmm. but um so we all like basically have to gather everyone up and get into a tornado shelter yeah we had to open up the hatch and like climb down there and by the time we got everyone together it had already like because that's what happens they form and most of the time they just disappear yeah and that's what happened with this and then it started hailing like golf ball size chunks of hail like dent your car so yeah wow and uh it was just within a matter of like two minutes all that happened you know formed rush down there disappears hail lightning and scene and <laughs> end wow that's a lot to have happen in two minutes yeah 
But so it wasn't like an actual tornado, but it was pretty close. And I was like, you guys just live like this? Yeah. <laughs> and then the town over, the town over got like just fucking not demolished, but like got hit really hard. Yeah. Like the next town over. I think it's a, a, a government conspiracy because trailer parks just get obliterated. And All the time. It's the trailer park lobby is what they're doing is they want... They send them tornadoes in there. Yeah. They wipe out the trailers, and then they sell new trailers. You get to some all new trailers. You get new trailers. And some of those new double wides, those are pretty nice, folks. I mean, they have 2.5 bathrooms <laughs> with a slight vaulted ceiling. Yeah. Um, I got three more for you. Here we go. Favorite uh, vacation spot? Oof. Favorite vacation spot. I've never been there. <laughs> but it's but my I, favorite. But I, wanna, I really want to go to... Uh, I really want to go to uh, Cabo. Okay. I just want to go to Mexico and I sit on go, a beach. I would love to go to Cabo also. I've never been to Cabo. <laughs> favorite vacation spot. Never been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, favorite one that you have been to. Favorite one that I have been to. Portland, Oregon. <laughs> yeah, where I'm from. Well, that's the thing. Is so much of my vacations, I just go back home to see family. Yeah. I got to go somewhere for myself. But uh, I would probably say... You know, vacation, it's a big city, but I love New York. Oh, I love New York, too. Yeah. In the summer only. Yeah, in the in the most fucking stinky, hot, sticky part of the year, the summer. Yeah. I went in, uh, let's see here. I went, last time I was there was November. It, was, it wasn't that cold. It was pretty good. Nice. Uh, okay, last two. Yeah. Do you enjoy Las Vegas, Nevada? Uh, no. Okay. No, I don't. Great. Uh, I like it for like a day. And then it's, uh, it's, I, yeah, not for me. Okay. Not for me. Also, huge gambling problems. Oh, so got to stay away. Really? No, oh. but I'm just not yeah. good at it. Right. Well, I, no I one is there. good at it, or they wouldn't have built Vegas. Exactly. Yeah. I just remember losing like $30 in like 10 seconds, and I was like, okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. That's the how I weed out like who I'm going to hang out with after I interview them. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So we're yeah. not friends. I mean, I, I do like comedy, and they treat you very well when you're doing comedy. That's true. I love a hotel. I love a buffet. Mm. Um, oh, let me ask you this. If, have you ever, I guess I do like Vegas. Have you worked <laughs> at one of the casinos and had to go to the employee buffet downstairs? No, I've never done that. I heard that's like a big thing. The only one I've done is uh, Jimmy Kimmel's. Oh, okay. And then they like, but yeah, the one, uh, some of the other ones, yeah, you have to, you have to eat with, uh, yeah. If you work on anything at the casino, so I've done a couple of TV shows like that were filmed like on one of the stages at MGM. Yeah. And it was like, we're going downstairs. Yeah. It's this weird escalator that you'll never find unless they tell you where it is. Uh huh. <laughs> and like, it's like the backstage of Disney. It's like crazy. Yeah. Because they don't. They don't How's want any, the food? It's horrible it's the stuff that no one eats off the top buffet they just bring it downstairs and feed it to everybody. Fuck. It's gross it's not bad it's better than like school food it's better than school food but what, that's, that's what we're feeding our kids right is the is the left the scraps of the vegas buffet mm -hmm. that they feed to the employees square pizzas is better than school food yeah which is a great segue into the last question yeah and i ask everybody this yes what is the best meal you've ever had in your whole life Holy shit. That is a phenomenal question. The best meal. Man. I'm guessing it was some, some kind of pasta and red wine with the broccolini. That was a really good <laughs> meal. Tasted just as good coming up. <laughs> um, there is a... Man. Honestly, probably. So it, it's two. I mean, there's one that was like this really good Italian restaurant in in Portland because Portland does have like pretty incredible food. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say the best meal I had was the first time I went to New York and I bought a bodega sandwich, you know, from like just like a bodega, you know, and they yeah. all have like amazing sandwiches. Yeah. And all I wanted was to get a sandwich from one of those places and then a giant slice of pizza. And I got the like freshest slice of cheese fresh out of the oven, mm. my bodega sandwich, and I ate it at some, some park in Brooklyn. 
just sitting outside. And I was like, damn, this is as if kid me who saw uh, Home Alone 2 <laughs> could see where I was right now, he'd be very proud. So yeah, just that bodega sandwich and a fucking garbage slice of cheese pizza <laughs> with the the atmosphere. But yeah, yeah, that was it. Or the meal that I spent, you know, over a hundred dollars on. Either one, mm -hmm. close it's a toss up. Which meal did you spend a hundred dollars on? That was the the restaurant in Portland that I can't even think of the name off the uh, top of my head. But it's that yeah. like farm to table, yeah. northern Italian style. Yeah. You know, there's dirt from our boots on the table. Yeah, yeah that kind of thing. I was like, yes delicious i would say that 90 percent of the people that answer that question have the answer with an italian meal of some sort yeah which is interesting because i think my favorite one of my favorite meals of all time is from this thai place and it's like a curry noodle soup mm. kind of thing and then uh and then yeah the the birria tacos mm. where you dip them in the consomme that shit's pretty good too <sighs> now i'm getting hungry yeah Fortunately, uh, we got church right after this, and then we can go eat. Yes! We got to pray. That's right. Yeah. That's Dear Lord, right. <laughs> thank you for having Simon on the show today. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. What if I just start actually just like 40-minute yeah. <laughs> prayer? And I'm the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Dear Simon. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're God, are you Simon or Mr. Gibson? Uh, Simon. My friends call me First Simon. name God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coming this fall. <laughs> yeah. We're pitching so many shows today. We got it. Yeah. I'll call my agent after this, steal all these ideas, but I will cast you in them Thank when you. I'm the showrunner. Yeah, because I don't want to be a showrunner. You don't want to write and do all no, that shit. I, I can't read. I do have a bonus question if you have time. Yes, I do. They sell Simon the sitcom today. Yeah. Who's in your writer's room? Who's in my writer's room? Well, you're in there. You're the showrunner, obviously. Sick. So wrote a couple eps. Uh, who's in my writer's room? I mean, I would just, I would probably just be that piece of shit that hires all his friends and yeah. then whoever the studio tells me I have to. <laughs> right. There's one studio guy and like eight of your best comedy friends. <laughs> yeah. I don't know too many writer names. So mm -hmm. I'm just hiring my friends who oh, know. Oh, yeah. To I read. just assume that would be your favorite comics also. Oh, my favorite comics. Like who's help your comics that help you write your, your sitcom of your life? Yeah. I mean, Rory Scovel. Does he write stuff? Because he's now. one of my favorite comics. <laughs> yeah. Get him in there. Rory, you're hired. Rory, me and you, buddy. His special was awesome. Yeah. He's so funny. Yeah. Not that this is coming out soon enough, but he's actually on my show, on the show I co-run at the Lyric Hyperion. He's doing it on Tuesday. Oh. So, yeah. He'll be, you'll both be long famous by yeah. the time. Yeah, by the time this comes out, you'll be yeah. like, Rory, who? He'll be the president of the United yeah, States. Yeah, Rory's the president. <laughs> I'm a star. I could live in that world. Oh, me too. I want to live in that world. Yeah. Uh, let's plug everything you got before we go. How can we find you on the internet? Uh, yeah, uh, at uh, Simon Gibson Comedy on Instagram, and I think all of them now. Yeah, uh, I put the comedy on there. I don't know if I'm going to keep it. Probably by the time this episode comes out, it'll just be back to Simon Gibson. Yeah. Uh, on everything. Uh, probably I'll still be doing a weekly show at the Lyric Hyperion every Tuesday, 8 mm -hmm. p.m. It's called In Unit Laundry. Check us out. We got Wait, some great lineups. Where's the Hyperion? <clears throat> That's in Silver Lake? In Silver Lake, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, watch the, the movie and TV show I'm in mm -hmm. that's out now that I'm starring in, and it's great. We don't need any more people to watch it. We have too many people watching it. Yeah, if it's you're too lucky. popular of a show. Yeah. But check it out if you want. And uh, to my one friend at NBC that I know is an executive, we want to do season two of Cannonball in Cabo. In Cabo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, thank you for coming, man. Thank you so much for having me. This really is awesome. appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on the Isaac Abrams Show, everybody.